Paul in uh, Woodenville, Washington. Hey, Paul, what's on your mind? Hi, Tom. Hey, Paul. How are you? I am great. I hope you are well. I'm, 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 I'm very well. Thanks. Um, well, I, I know with, with the dog topic on the table, it's certain talk radio dust to talk about something like the Supreme Court. But... No, no, do it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> uh, I don't have any dog advice for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, well, you know, the Supreme Court, um, since the, uh, the passing of Justice Scalia, people tempt, seem to think that we're gonna, we have this evenly divided court and that we're going to have uh, a whole bunch of four to four decisions. Right. And I don't think that's going to be the case, um, thinking about this. And I was thinking about earlier this week, we had um, oral arguments on the, uh, a case it was called Little Sisters for the Poor, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, whether the, this uh, Catholic group would have to provide birth control for their employees. And... The, the problem with this case is that, well, the Little Sisters of the Poor have, have lost their, their, uh, their case in the, I think it was the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. But there were other cases that were like it. The, the, the issue is this. Is they don't want to have to provide birth control for their employees under religious exemption. But the problem is they don't want to file their religious exemption. Right. They don't think they should have to. Right. And the reason being is that you know, they could file out, fill out a, a a form, just for people who aren't familiar, fill out a form that says, this, we, we claim a religious exemption, we don't want to do this. Right, it can and even be a letter, employees. by the way, Paul. It can be a letter, right, it can right. be just a two-sentence letter. Right, one sentence. Yeah, you don't want to sentence. do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then they wouldn't have to. Their employees could get, and these women could get birth control in another way. It could be either it would, the government would subsidize it through their own insurance company, but there would be another way. And so what these, what these, um, Groups are claiming is that well, if even for us to file our exemption is, in essence, a referral to someone else to provide birth control, and we don't even think we should have to do that. Correct. Well, how would you? <laughs> the question is here: How would you give someone a religious exemption other than some sort of kind of a law which says, "Let us know that you want it." Right. It's, it's it's almost like they're arguing that if somebody comes to work for us, they must. Uh, if a woman comes to work for us. She must not use birth control uh, paid for either by us or by any company that we're associated with, because the, right. the 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 woman can go back to the same provider and you know and buy the and pay separately for the birth control, um, uh, which is bizarre. Right. Well, so the issue here is let, let's look at it. they feel their religious rights are being are being compromised, but let's also there's the question of whether or not the woman the women employees rights are being compromised so there's two there's two groups who have, who have competing uh arguments here right. so for the court to go to 4 to 4 whereas some of these groups have like i said little sisters they they lost their case in in the lower court but other groups have won right so if it were a 4 to 4 decision these group the 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 lower court's decisions would win which aren't the same in each case right and this so is my, so you end up with different laws in different parts of the country, right? And I don't. And this being a, a question that has that the court agreed to take means that they think there is some constitutional implication here. Right. Well, John Roberts is he can't just say, "Oh, it's four to four. If it comes to the, he can't let the court become irrelevant. I mean, it's his job. And right. so I think uh, John Roberts becomes the swing vote here. And when the chief justice starts to become the swing, he carries weight with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, in other words, he can't let the court say, "Oh, what, we, we become irrelevant." Right. And also, we can't, we've not only become irrelevant, but different things happen in different parts of the country. When it's a, he can't let right. that happen. And John Especially Roberts is a, is an anti anti uh, anti birth control anti abortion Catholic, um, as are you know <laughs> all of the the right wingers on the court. But he's already voting, you know, uh, uh, on the side of Little Sisters of the Poor and against their female employees. So how does he become a swing vote? Uh, I don't know if he is. I, I, we, well, he's, he's con- pretty consistently voted point. that way in all the cases that have come before the court uh, around this issue. Well, but it's... It, it, he, you think he might change? line of questioning, people are assuming that he, he would vote. He and, uh, and Kennedy 
uh, certainly a lead, we might expect that of Alito, but not necessarily because the, case, the the problem here is the law is so clear, and there's a there's a there's a, a legal there's a prescription in the law for these for these groups to to have their way, and and so and in Hobby Lobby, Samuel Alito wrote that hey, yeah it's Rifra I could there's nothing I can do it's not my problem I didn't do this the law stands as it is it's not it's not a constitutional question. And and this is what I would think Samuel Alito would have to turn to as well. But to leave it four to four, see, then the case is then it's it's heard. It doesn't come back. It's already been heard. Right. And even if a, even if a new justice, so what I'm saying is, even if a if another justice comes on the court, the the uh, at least a five. We have to look at it this way. Only twenty percent of the cases are five to four. Fifty percent of the cases are nine to zero. Right. So. But at least the five four to cases are clearly adjudicated. Or, uh, there's a clear decision being rendered. Four four is as what the old football coach used to say. It's, it, that's like kissing your sister. That's that the tie is kiss. It, it doesn't it doesn't do anything, and it doesn't solve any problems. I don't think John Roberts can let that happen. Yeah. I don't think he. I, you know. So I so are you suggesting, Paul, that what John Roberts should say is because it looks like there's going to be a four four tie, which is going to leave the country in in limbo with different laws in different places, and which is not the intention of the founders, not the intention of the Constitution. We are going to pass on making a decision on this for the moment until we have a uh, uh, an odd number of people on the court, so that we can we can come to a five four decision. Well, no, they've already heard the oral arguments. They're gonna they're gonna make a decision. They're gonna make a decision. So it can't get relitigated, right? They can, why they, they, why they can't it get? Why can't it be relitigated? It relitigated if a decision hadn't been made, as it was in Roe versus Wade, when uh, Rehnquist and uh, and Powell came on the court. They they they, they that, that's why Roe versus Wade was heard a second time because the decision hadn't been made, hadn't been rendered, and they said we want to hear it again. Right. And so, so they did. That's why Roe so, Roe had already been heard. And but then a decision, I believe, a decision had not been rendered, and then so they they said when they came on the court, they wanted to hear the case again. So it was it was actually a moot point by that time because uh, Sandra uh, McCarvey, I think, or but Norma McCarvey, had already had the baby. So but they said, well, hear it again, well, because this could come up again. Right. Well, if the decision's already made, then it can't come back. I don't think it can come back once the decision's made. So that's why I think that since they've already heard oral arguments and they're planning to to make this decision by by June. Are you suggesting it's kind of like double jeopardy? Because I thought that the, the Supreme Court could always reevaluate their own decisions. But there has to be a reason for the case to come back. Oh, somebody has to file. Well, there's no shortage of people who will refile a case. Well, but but will they hear it again? And, and why? Because now we have another justice? That's not the reason why. Why could that not be the reason? I, I don't see how... I don't see I mean, how you, you just left. said basically that's, four, that's why Roe got relitigated. People. Which one? That's why Roe got reheard. No, but that's because they, uh, that's the Roe was reheard because they heard the case the first time, but they weren't short of justices. Two justices were replaced in the meantime, and and, the, and it was Rehnquist who said we want to hear the case again before a decision is made. Right. A decision hadn't been made. They they've already heard. They, they, I suppose. They could say we're not making a decision in June. They could do that. Yeah, yeah. That's that. That was my point. If if they said we're not going to make a decision and we're going to wait for you know a, a ninth justice, then that seems like the cleanest way to deal with this. But anyhow, Paul, thank you for the call. It's uh, we'll we'll see how this plays out, won't we? To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here, and please be sure to hit the handy dandy subscribe button. So you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.